Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Birth by Sleep. Uh, you know what? I couldn't even figure out an intro for that, to be honest with you. Welcome to the almost final episode of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Now, once you have completed all three scenarios and the game asks you, asks you to save, what you do is you create, it will ask you to create another save file. That save file will take you to the final episode. Now, before we do begin the final episode, I want to say something. You do have to go out of your way to get all the Xehanort reports. If you're playing critical mode, you don't need to worry about the Xehanort reports. But if you're playing on proud mode, standard mode, or beginner, for whatever reason, um, you need all the Xehanort reports to even get to the final episode. I think you might also need the Xehanort reports in critical mode, but I don't. It's been a while. But... To be able to get not only the secret ending, which I'm banking on showing because there is a bit of spoilers that happens in the um, secret endings. But what these Xehanort reports do, I mean what these Xehanort reports are saying, is that they are basically giving the thoughts of what Xehanort was thinking during not only his um his ways of learning the keyblade but also the ways of the darkness and you know why he has such fixate um fixation on it or fascination of it now <clears throat> i'm gonna just go ahead and just skim through them because if i read all these it'll be just a part in itself you can pause the video and read them yourself if you wish but I'm going to go ahead and actually read another kind of reports in Kingdom Hearts 1. That way, you know, because at least that way I'm getting them as I'm progressing through the story rather than getting them in out of order. Like, seriously, these reports come in like such the most randomest times. It's ridiculous. But yes, these are also things that kind of can open up that gives a little bit of character development for Xehanort specifically because there's not much we really know about Xehanort aside from the fact that, oh, he used to be a master, he trained Ventus, and that's really about it. That's all we really know. We don't really know why he has such fascination for this. Now, these are probably going to be a little bit pointless and also probably a bit dated on for the most part. So when because when Kingdom Hearts 3 shows up and if my guess is right, they're probably going to go into a little bit more detail on Xehanort's backstory. Considering the fact that this series is supposed to be a saga as of this point for the Xehanort saga specifically, they don't really go too much of a backstory for the main villain himself. You kind of have to dive deeper and by reading reports to be able to understand his backstory. The Like I said, we know a, very little about Xehanort. We know why he wants the Keyblade, the, the, you know, the Kai Blade, because he wants an answer. But other than that, we don't really know much else about the guy. We don't know why he has the um the keyblade he has now funny enough in kingdom hearts back cover there is a reason as to why um that keyblade exists i will be showcasing that once we go to 0 0.2 fragmentary passage guys are probably wondering what in the world are you talking about soldier well in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep's development, there was supposed to be an extra, extra episode. We do have it, but it's not fully completed yet. It's completed in 0 0.2. It's to give an excuse as to, hey, we're not going to be releasing Kingdom Hearts 3 no time soon, so here's something, here's something of a beta version for you guys to go ahead and enjoy the controls of Kingdom Hearts 3 once it officially comes out. But that's essentially what it is. Now, will I be showing 0 0.2? I will be skipping certain cutscenes because it kind of, Well, I mean, eh, to be honest, they're not really spoilers per se. But it would be kind of odd going through those cutscenes now because we haven't really finished Dream Drop Distance. Because the thing is, is that that, um, that, those, that, that. The gameplay, the cutscenes that happens there kind of happens friggin' after Dream Drop Distance, which is like, all right, whatever. We were destined to meet, and I could sense the potential within him. But the boy was too big, 
binge for uh, began be be binding binding for his own good. It's probably not the word. I came to a conclusion. He was too frail to serve as a vessel, and decided to use him for a second purpose. I had in mind. I will remove the darkness from his heart and split him into two. Then I would have my heart of pure light and my heart of pure darkness. Wait, did I even finish? Yeah, yeah, it's finished. Ah, oh, well. As was to be expected, Ventus lacked the con the cons con situation for such an ordeal. Uh, I was able to remove the darkness inside him and create Vanitas. A heart of pure darkness, but Ventus drifted into clutches of sleep. Ventus' heart of pure light and Vanitas' heart of pure darkness. If both could be made strong enough, one day clash, I knew the Keyblade would be forged. But Vanitas took too, took too much of Ventus' heart, and from that fracture, I could see the last of Ventus' light was slipping away. The boy deserved a place to spend his final moments of peaceful now, peacefully. And what would and what should come to mind but my own boyhood home, which is technically Destiny Island. My legs took me my legs took me there unbidden, and I stood and I stood there on the same beach where I had made my choice so many years ago. I thought not a single thing has changed. Here in this quiet world time marches in place, content that Ventus would find peace here. I started to walk away, but just then the boy held up his keyblade. The light within him had not died. Ventus and Vanitas were not matched in power. I could not train them together, or Vanitas' darkness would grow, would gnaw away what little Ventus had left. Of course, since I needed a place where the boy's light might flourish, the answer was obvious Ericus and his, ab and his absolutes. Considering how we had parted ways, I expected fractions, but if anything, Ericus seemed delighted to see me again. Even though I don't know why he was delighted to see you again. Seriously, that was by far the most stupidest thing ever. He readily agreed to take care of Ventus. Now I need only wait for the boy's heart to get stronger. I had not visited this second home of mine for some time, and discovered Ericus had already found two pupils of his own. Within one of them, Terra, I sensed something. The boy, though well-intentioned, seeks power single-mindedly, and that kind of hunger is a seedbed for darkness. I have found my vessel. The time has come. I have received word from Ericus that his pupils are to become true Keyblade Masters. Terra and Aqua, they will be easy now to lure into the outside world, but Ventus, I will get nowhere without him. Venus can feel somewhat of Ventus' feels, and he says Terra is the key. Ventus has loved Terra like a little, like a real brother ever since he let him keep his old wooden Keyblade. It seems we have found a loose thread at which we can tug to unravel Ventus' heart. The first step is to get Terra alone. Then we need to plant the seeds of doubt in Ventus. Let him carry his faint light, and he chases his brother into the darkness. Let the darkness make his light stronger, then let the light deepen the darkness. And where the two finally meet is where the stuff of legend will become real. And that's basically as to why the plot happens in Birth by Sleep to begin with. Please accept my deepest gratitude for the invitation to witness your pupil's ox, ox, uh, obsession, obsession to the office of the true keyboard master. It was a heavy mantle our master placed upon your shoulder in naming you successor, but you have nothing, nonetheless, preserved a raise to masters yourself. I know it cannot be. I know it have been easy. I know it cannot have been easy. I did you terrible harm in the past over a petty difference in opinion, and just a few years ago, selfishly, trust thrust my own burdens upon you. Yada yada yada. Basically, it's just him apologizing to Zen um to Erica so that he can go ahead and go ahead and see his wonderful students. Like I said, if I read all these things, we'll be here forever. Anyways, like I said before. Once you've gotten all the Xehanort reports, and also whenever you actually complete all the scenarios, you get the original background. Because whatever character you start with, it shows that one character that you're playing as. The one character you played as last. But anyways, it's time for the final gameplay for Aqua. For the original Birth by Sleep. There's actually more to come. Go into more detail with that later. But for right now, it's time for a lot of questions and a lot of things to be answered and it's going to be one cutscene that kind of pisses me off as to why one game exists anyways let's go and enjoy the massive cutscenes
Ven needs a safe place. That's where you want to go. Of course, I would never let that happen. I promise you I will bring Tara back. Only this time, you'll see he has what it takes to be a master. <laughs> He's not as weak as you think. Aqua. Yes? Now that you are a master, there is one secret in particular you must know. Should anything happen to me, and you find the Legion of Darkness at our doorstep, I ask that you take my Keyblade and use it to lock this land away. What? Generations of Keyblade Masters have been charged with keeping this land safe. Light and darkness exist in balance here, and there are those who would abuse such neutral ground. This is why our predecessors devised a certain trick. Just use the key, and this land will be transformed. That day forward, all who visit this land will be lost to oblivion. None ever able to solve the mystery. None, Aqua, except oh. you. I know it's a lonely place, but you'll be safe. Tara and I will be back to wake you up before you know it. Put an end to me.
Terra, tell me where to find you. And we got ourselves the Bright Crest, a keyblade with long reach that provides an outstanding boost in magic. It also makes it easier to land critical hits and deals higher damage when you do. Now, quick warning, this Keyblade is only for this episode only. You cannot use it for any other purposes, which sucks, but whatever. And yes, if you guys remember what that castle looks like, yes, it is indeed that castle from that particular game where you end up using cards. She's the reason why that castle exists. Why do we travel through that? Uh, whatever. Anyways... It is time for the final battle for Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. And I guess we can go ahead and look at Aqua. You might wonder, like, my god, what is with all the fire surges? Um, don't worry about that. That's for another fight to come. I will have to say, though, Lightning Ray, very wonderful ability. Sadly, though, you can only, you are guaranteed to get it if you do a, com if you do the, um, Deep Space Command Board, if you actually, you know, buy it to be able to get it. But you can also meld Thunder Surge and I think it's Binding Strike, I want to say. And there's a 10% chance that they would, um, they will meld and com they will meld together and combine and change into Lightning Ray. Lightning Ray is kind of like Sonic Shadow, but I'm going to say this now. It is nothing like Sonic Shadow. It is so much better. I'm keeping Explosion and not going to really bother to go after Aqua's um, Teleport Spike. I will be going after Teleport Spike when we end up doing the extra video. Now, I end up making a poll to go ahead and see which character will I be using for the extra videos. And you guys, you know, you, you guys really love Aqua. I mean, I understand why. I mean, she is probably like the fan. She is basically like the fan character of the Kingdom Hearts series ever since um, Riku was a thing when you know Riku actually showed his badassery but Aqua is yeah Aqua is gonna be the person that I'm gonna be focused on and I'm gonna say this now I have been focusing on this chick since friggin forever right now and we have almost gotten everything I'm gonna say this now though half of these abilities are not gonna be used for one of the secret bosses only because his uh, programming is kind of warped anyways enough of my rambling Let's begin with the final battle. Oh, also forgot to mention something. The Keyblade Graveyard and the song that's about to play right now are the only two songs that are remixed in the 2.5 soundtrack. There are no other songs. Every other song is natural in this game. So anyways, let's begin and enjoy the cutscene. Terra's heart has been extinguished, <laughs> smothered by the darkness within him! My name is Master Aqua. Now return my friend's heart, or pay the price! Alright, despite the fact that me being a dummy and forgot to equip the right Keyblade, Eh, it doesn't matter. Who cares? It's time for the final battle. And this is by far the best music in the game. Let's just listen to his gloriness.
wonderful, wonderful Yoko Shimura soundtrack. It's even better even in the um, original version. But anyways, this fight is usually is literally the same exact fight as you fought before. Now, I always have like a very issue when it comes to Aqua's barrier ability. Sometimes it doesn't even activate and sometimes it, it does. Now he's doing his wonderful dark impulse ability. Same as that thing. It's a little bit faster, however. But yeah, I should showcase what um, the wonderfulness of this ability. This is Lightning Ray. Do you see how fast this move does? And, and we should probably be ending this. Okay, or never mind. Well, I don't even know what that even was. But anyways, it's time to meet a character that we will meet in Kingdom Hearts 1. I will guide you to the depths of darkness. Say hello to the Guardian. I don't know why it's still called Shadow Other. We already know what he is. Now, the Guardian, since he is a basic little pansy in this version of the game, he's not as he's not as strong, thank God. So he doesn't do the whole wonderful line that you guys remember and know and love. And this is look at this. This is just I love this move. Like, I learned to love this move now. <laughs> When he does the roar thing, what he's going to do is, you know, you know, I'm I'm so familiar with Kingdom Hearts 1's Billy Zane. By the way, this voice actor that is voicing Terranort, I'm not going to actually put the voice actor because there's really no point because he's not going to be in Kingdom Hearts 1. This is Richard Epcar. This is the voice actor for um, our wonderful Dark Brethren now. We'll be knowing more of that person later. Now, there is a unique way of beating this boss, and we're going to beat him in that unique way right now. Because if we don't, then I will be... I'll be sad. You want to end up getting caught, mashing the X button, and you'll enter Terra's heart. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Anyways, wait for the light. And booyah! And that is the end of the final battle for Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, ladies and gentlemen. And enjoy more cutscenes. <laughs> Stop fighting back. Tara, I know you're in there. <laughs> Teach you get out of my heart. Do something, or we'll both be lost. as soon as I thought. But I promise I'll be there one day to wake you up. Hey. 
I'm gonna head back. Uh. Yeah, me too. Huh? Sora? What's wrong? Huh? You're... Uh, that's weird. It's like something's squeezing me inside. Somebody up there must be sad. Up where? They say every world is connected by one great big sky. So maybe there's somebody up there in all those worlds who's really hurting. And they're waiting for you to help them. Well, gee, do you think there's something I could do? Hmm. Maybe they just need you to open your heart and listen. Hmm. I don't know, Riku. You say some weird stuff sometimes, but I'll try it. Okay. Hmm. Hey, can you hear me? Right this way. Young man, what ails you? Can you speak? Tell me your name. Zayanort. Zayanort. Huh? Quickly, get him to the castle. You can count on me. Dylan, get those for me. Seems like I've been walking for ages. How long have I been down here? Maybe I should fade into the darkness here. I guess it's been so long. I almost forgot how to smile.
<laughs> There's always a way. And that is the end of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. When would I begin to Kingdom Hearts 1? You want to know what's funny? This is actually my freaking summer LP in a nutshell. Because I was not expecting this game to go on longer than it should. We are almost done with freaking July. I am taking a goddamn break and I'm going to wait until winter comes back. Or fall. I mean, don't worry. I won't. It won't take me that long to get to Kingdom Hearts 1. But I need my cold back because I cannot record in this heat. I just wanted to... A lot of my friends wanted me to actually do this and you know at first I was a bit hesitant on doing it because I didn't really know which game I wanted to start with Did I want to start with one or did I want to start with birth by sleep or did I want to start with the non-existing ability of recording Kingdom Hearts Chi so I decided to myself you know what most people usually want to see the game in its chronological order rather than is in in rather than its release date so i decided to go with kingdom hearts one first i mean kingdom hearts birth by sleep first then kingdom hearts one then chain of memories then kingdom hearts two and then we'll be watching the cutscenes of 3 5 over two days. I have my reasoning as to why I'm not playing 3 5 over two days. It's not because I don't enjoy it. It's more because of the fact that it's not interesting to watch. Um, you're usually... The thing about 3 5 over two days is that it's basically mission-based. And you're usually doing the same things, usually constantly. You fight a bunch of Heartlesses here and there. You beat them, you go ahead and progress through the plot, and that's really about it. That's all you're doing. That's not interesting to commentate, in my honest opinion. Some people might, you know, find it other um find it otherwise appealing, but that's more of a nah, that's nah nah nah, nah man, just nah. But we will be we will be watching the cutscenes. <laughs> I mean, I will be commentating over the cutscenes because, I mean, they got subtitles. Because if I don't commentate over them, I'm not going to really give my thoughts on what's really happening. If it, You know, if, we're just, if I'm just playing the cutscenes, that's kind of dumb, you know, honestly. It's like you guys could just go on somebody else's um, video and just watch all the cutscenes if you want to do that. They kind of did add something else to the updated version of 3 Fight Over 2 Days. It's basically the um, final boss fight. And... That looks interesting. Hey, at least it's better than what they did in the original 2.5 where they... Well, I mean, in the original 1.5 where they did nothing. But anyways, we will be getting to Kingdom Hearts 1 when it's a little bit colder. Because once it's colder, I can be able to, you know, focus a bit better. I don't have to be overheating. Not only that, this is one of my summer LPs. I want to try to focus on trying to get something else going as of right now. I want to try to be able to see if I really... I know people want me to live stream. I know they do. I don't know why, but I mean, I know people want me to. And I do want to. Just not in this heat. Because this heat really sucks. I need to figure out a good way to balance both my channel and, my, and, a li and do live streams. I might just do them in a way where I just do them like once a week. Or so because at least that way I'm not you know suffering with too much stuff on my plate because I want to be able to like edit videos and whatnot but other than that I really enjoyed doing this LP like I really really did it was fun there wasn't any funny to be had because you know most of the time it's me not saying anything but eh, I was gonna put something here and there but I decided to say nah you know what Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep is sort of serious. Kingdom Hearts 1, not so much. Kingdom Hearts 1, it's a little bit more kid, it's a little bit more child friendly. It's a little bit more beginner friendly. And do I recommend going to Birth by Sleep first? Not really, because Birth by Sleep's mechanics are completely changed dramatically in Kingdom Hearts 1. I mean, from Kingdom Hearts 1, I should say. I recommend going to Kingdom Hearts 1. The story in Kingdom Hearts 1 at least makes a little bit more sense than how it does now. Now, I know most people will say, but the, but the story makes complete sense. You guys have to think about it in this perspective. Not many people are going to understand the story as much as you do. Trust me. 
because at this point the only way you can there are some games that are kind of like why do they even exist why what why are they part of the story you can literally take them out and nobody will even remember it considering the fact you keep replaying after it. 358 over two days is the one that suffers from that oh and sadly however birth by sleep suffers from one of the syndromes that I kind of don't like about the handheld games, they just, they do the Sonic the Hedgehog approach with the songs where they just mix and match songs, themes from levels. It's not really my honest opinion, my favorite, because it's not orchestrated music. I mean, I much, I, in my opinion, must prefer Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2's rendition of it. And they better do this in Kingdom Hearts 3 because if that soundtrack is going to be having a wonderful orchestrated music, and we've heard Yoko Shimura's wonderful orchestrated music in Kingdom Hearts 0.2, that final boss theme is glorious. And it really makes me can't wait for whatever other music that they're going to put in into the game in Kingdom Hearts 3. And whatever secret boss they decide to implement, which I'm going to have to probably be. Now for Kingdom Hearts 3, I'm actually going to do that blind. I'm going to do that um, blind for two reasons. One, so we can all end up enjoying the story. Two, so, you know, we can, um, you know, uh, try to figure out. It, well, one, one of the major reasons is because it's Kingdom Hearts and I, I love this series. I maybe don't show it as much as a lot of other people. And mind you, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm usually, I'm usually like one of those fans that kind of don't showcase my fanism for a series in particular i just showcase it in a way that is kind of hidden i mean i want to like express my feelings for this series but eh, i don't know i've always been like that like i love sonic i love mario i love nintendo i love kingdom hearts and, you know, I love, like, practically a lot of games that I played. But I never really showcased it, so people usually think that I'm not a fan of it. No, I'm a very huge fan of a lot of game series that I played. I just suck at expressing it, is the thing. <laughs> I mean, there are many ways to be able to express it. But I just have ways of expressing it very lackluster, is the thing. So, Terra is... There, there is a lot of reasons. That castle that we have saw is, yes, it's indeed the same exact castle that we are going to see in a particular game later on. There are a lot of reasons. There are a lot of things that happens in this game that literally connects to things. To a lot of things that happens in the game. And the series itself... As sort of confusing as it is, the story, if you kind of don't, if you, all right, to be able to actually understand the story fully, you kind of do have to read the supplementary notes here and there to be able to actually get the full story because the cutscenes alone are not going to really help. I'm just going to say that now. The cutscenes alone are not going to really do justice because some cutscenes are just not implemented well like the fact that they didn't really do anything with lee and isa and the thing is we know who lee and isa are people who are familiar with the series already know who lee isa dylan um break um who else is who else is next uh the guy with the the, the axe we, we we and um evan we know all those characters we know what we know what befalls them and we know what becomes of them but the way how they implemented it in the story felt kind of rushed. It didn't really feel like that they knew what to really do. It just looked like they, they wanted to introduce us to these characters because what of what Ventus looks like. Also, this is probably like the only introduction that you're ever going to get to Sephiroth in three, two. Oh my god, Black Feather! Oh, and then for some reason, Zack is gone. See you in Crisis Core, cause that's kind of what I think that this that, that that's what happened to him. I guess I don't really know. It's weird. Yeah, but the black feather is supposed to indicate Sephiroth. Either that or Sephiroth just killed him and murdered him or something. By the way, for secret bosses, there are kind of a lot of dangerous secret bosses. There are two. Well, one that is only for the for the international and. Um, PAL version 
And then there's also one secret boss that kind of has like no bearings to no plot whatsoever. He's just there. But we'll be going into more detail with those guys a little bit later. There are two extra secret bosses. Well, three if you actually count um, the, the, the big giant douchebag whale. Um, those are only Final Mix exclusive though. And to be able to get to those two secret bosses, you kind of have to get 30 arena points. And you're probably saying, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. It's difficult. You have to beat all the arena. You have to beat all the arenas. You have to get a certain amount of medals. You have to beat all of the command boards. All of them. You have to win them. Not just not just do them and all, you know, you, you're fine. No, you got to beat them. And then there's um then there's the racing games. Now, to be able to unlock, there are the game kind of doesn't really tell you this, but to be able to unlock the other races, you kind of have to do them in Disney Town first, and then they are unlocked. But the command board, you can just do them straight. Because you kind of unlock all the command boards automatically. Once you've completed all the command boards, there's one more command board that's unlocked, which is called the Radiant Garden. I mean, not Radiant Garden. Um, uh, Land of Departure, which is weird, I know, because you basically, the first um, command board you play is the Land of Departure. So why are you playing the Land of Departure a second time? We don't know. It's weird. But I like, I like a lot of the characters. Aqua is, of course, the favorable one. Um, Ventus is a close second, and Terra, there are people that like Terra. Terra will want, Terra, I swear, he will commend himself in Kingdom Hearts 3. Not in Kingdom Hearts and any of the others, because considering the fact that what happens in the other games, it doesn't really matter right now. But, other than that, overall... I'm glad that you guys end up enjoying this. I know some people usually binge watch all these um, episodes, which at that point I I don't I don't blame you. Like binge watching um, RPGs are much better than you know watching them separately. But anyways, I'll be seeing you guys in Kingdom Hearts One in the near future. CCX over and out. Can you hear me? I heard your voice. It cut through the darkness around me. Huh. All alone, I followed the sound into a sea of light. And found myself here. With you. Mm. You gave me something back when I needed it most. A second chance. I did? But now I have to go back to sleep again. Are you sad? Would you mind if I stayed here with you? Sure, if it'll make you feel better. Thank you. Well, you know, I think it worked. Hehe. <laughs>